Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, 2019. Who would have thunk it? I was tired of being cooped up in the house, and yeah, it's New Year's Day, but uh, I just I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to get out. It's cold out here today, you know, relatively cold. Not like up in the northern part of the country, but certainly cold enough for me. I mean, I'm, I'm down in the deep south, you know. <laughs> I decided to come out and work on our, our rear shackles. Now, you remember last time we threw them in the vinegar, and I said I'd let them set for about a week, and that's about what I did. And look how it cleaned these babies up. And I brushed them a little bit with wire brushes and... But, you know, they're still not ready to be uh, painted, uh, primed and painted black. The bolts also came out fairly clean. The bolt heads are a little bit rusty. Got to get those clean. I still got to pick up some uh, new washers. By the way, I mentioned that I had bought all new washers last time for all the bolts. And there's a reason for that. The old ones were flattened out. They, basically, you don't even have a, 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 you know, a lock washer. You have just a flat washer. So that's why I got rid of them all. I learned years ago. Get rid of that junk if I could afford to do it. Many times when I was young, I couldn't even afford to buy a flat washer. Uh, I mean, a uh, lock washer or a flat washer, <laughs> actually. So, you know, we're going to get new ones for these, too. Down in the hole down in there, let me zoom in, is where the remaining rust is pretty heavy. Right down in there. I've got to get down in there and get that out. That's some pretty crusty stuff. Because that's where our rubber bushing is going to go in. Now, I've taken a rat tail file and filed down as much as I could. It was really bad before I did that. I got a little tired of pushing that rat tail file in and out of there. So I said, the heck with this. You know, this is uh, what? This is 2019. <laughs> Oop, don't drop your camera, John. This is 2019. Let's just go to Walmart today and pick up some grinding stones. There we are. These are aluminum oxide. And I got a package of, I think there's four in there, five maybe. And I'll be using the electric drill to, you know, to go up and down there and get as much out as I can. Then we'll go ahead and throw all of this back into the uh, into the vat of vinegar, into our tub of vinegar. But, you know, there's some other things I still have to do with it. I'll grind off a little bit right here. A lot of that's going to have to be ground off. It won't come off. The rust, the vinegar didn't eat it away, and I tried to file it off with the uh, rat tail file a little bit and that didn't do any good either so we're going to go ahead and work these babies over and when we get done we'll go ahead and put them in there but before we can do that there's something that absolutely needs to be done well, what absolutely needs to be done is these brushes that I've been using for all of this rust removal, they have had to lick. Look at that. Most of the bristles are missing from that one. That was for the really heavy, uh, coarse rust to scrape it down as much as possible. And then, of course, the, the brass bristle brushes are totally wiped out. So we need to throw them away. Let me get rid of those. And we need to clean this mess up. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is terrible. Terrible. However, look at the color of that vinegar. Five bucks worth of vinegar, but I'll tell you what, it de-rusted a lot of parts for us. We got our five bucks worth out of that. So I went out this morning when I was down to Walmart getting those grinding stones. I went ahead and picked up a couple more gallons of vinegar. We're going to clean this whole mess up in kind of a New Year's Day project. Put some nice fresh vinegar in so when we put those rear hangers in, it'll finish up the job in about a day and a half. Then we can paint them and move on to some other things. We're ready to give it a shot. Look at that. Now, don't let anybody ever tell you that vinegar does not remove rust. All that stuff you see is all rust that we got rid of. All right, that looks a little better. You know, I think these uh, parts may not need a full two gallons. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and pour one gallon in there. and We'll see how far that get, comes up. And if we need a second gallon, we'll go ahead and put it in. I wire, I wire brushed uh, with the electric drill these things here, but they still got rust and stuff on them. It needs to, and then I ground out as far as I could down in there. So let's uh, let this sit down in there. Well, maybe, maybe I'm going to need part of that second gallon because you got you got to cover it all the way up. If you don't, it'll rust. So you got to cover it all up. Let me see here. Yep, I'm going to have to add a little bit more. Well, there we go. I don't think it'll take more than two days of soaking to finally clean it all up so we can get this out of our hair. But, you know, it's the old story. If it takes ten more days, that's what we do.
We are back underneath the car where we took off the rear shackle and it, it, I'm also trying out this neat little battery charged light that uh, my, my son bought me. It's an LED. Charge it up and boy, it just, look at that, man. It just, whew, I don't want to open up the garage door because it's so cold out there. But anyway, uh, what we're going to be doing next, our next chore, or my next chore, is to get underneath here with wire brushes. I went down today when I was downtown at Walmart and picked up several new wire brushes. We're going to wire brush as much of this loose rust off as we can. We're going to do it all the way down, all the way down, and anywhere from this point here uh, down into this area here. Most of this is still all covered with uh, undercoating, so we're in pretty good shape on that. This is, a lot of it's dirt there, okay, though, but this is all undercoating, which is great. Anyway, we're going to get down this area here. We're going to wire brush, uh, you know, up in there. Wherever I, wherever I happen to see the rush, the rust. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and put some uh, rust converter on it. It's a rust treatment. But I didn't want to use anything, you know, now down here we're really going to have to, later on, we'll really have to do a lot of, uh, let me get this down in here. Let me, let me see a little. There's quite a bit of rust down in that area there. That, that would be uh, the rear floorboard. This is the back of the... Uh, the back of the seat area here but uh, there's quite a bit of rust up in there we will just just hit it with the uh, wire brushes I bought on both sides and uh, I'm going to try to do that before we put the springs in and uh, the springs come all the way down and they're real long and they're going to hook way back and here's where those front hangers were all the way to the front there see it right there my right there is kind of a so all of this area in here is going to have to be pretty much uh, wire brushed then we're going to spray it with some stuff I got uh, so that converter I was telling you about and I'll show you what it is now this is what we're going to be using the Permatex rust treatment I wanted a rust treatment reformer something that would stop the rust that one was fairly cheap and but a very effective that, and of course that's that's kind of hard to come up with very cheap, very effective. I wanted it locally available so I didn't have to keep messing with shipping charges. That This shipping charge business is driving me crazy. I wanted it to be in a spray can and I wanted it to be a brand that I recognize. And this is Permatex, I recognize that. Brendan and I kicked around several t types of uh, you know rust reformer, rust preventive, that sort of thing, rust converter. But, and, and they all looked good. I mean, there were videos on it and everything, and I had looked up a few, he looked up a few. The problem was I didn't recognize any of the names, and it was pretty expensive, some of it. I didn't want to sink a lot of money into a treatment that would not really work, because I'd be out the money, I'd be out the shipping, I'd be out everything, you know. I wanted something I could find locally. So, and if I could run low or I need some more, I could just run down and get it. And uh, I wound up getting this, so I selected Permatex based on a video that was put up by Do-It-Yourself Auto School, uh, old Pete, uh, his friend Pete. <laughs> he did a YouTube video on it uh, a while back, and he tried it because someone told him to give it a shot. He did, and I watched him do it on the YouTube video. You know, you got to understand, old Pete, he tells it like it is. If it sucks, he's just going to flat tell you, this stuff sucks. But he doesn't. He watching what he did there and watching the results right in front of my eyes. This stuff is really good. It really, really is. He said it was really good. He's not getting paid any money, you know, for doing all that. Neither am I right now. But anyway, uh, it worked. And when he got all done, it, I mean, it just turned the rust black. He put three coatings on there to make sure it did really good. Sprayed it on in there. Showered it down in there where there was a bunch of rust. And he said, you know, it works so well that. Yeah, looking at you know talking to his viewers he said this solves the rust problem to the point that you will never have to worry about it as long as you own the car i got a bug on my finger here get out of there anyway so that's why we're going with this uh one can for one side of the car at the rear one can for the other it'll be it'll cover up to about the middle of the uh what they call the package tray the rear deck underneath the windshield the window and the inside the car you know the, the basically the uh the uh, leaf spring area after I wire brush it. And I'll wire brush off as much as I can. It's going to be a nasty job, but so what? You know, when I get done, I'll just spray it. 
and you know, I'll probably put two, three coats on, just like I watched Pete do. And then we can go ahead and move on to other things. And if I run out, like I said, all I got to do is run down to O'Reilly's. I paid a total of 20 bucks for both cans. And that's with tax and everything. I like going to O'Reilly because they give you a, it's close by the house and they give you a 10% discount if you're a military veteran. I kind of like that, you know. So if it costs me, say, 60 bucks to do all the underside of the car that has rust, which I don't think it'll cost that much, but in case it does, that's still a very big savings, you know. Uh, I wanted the uh, rust treatment to be non-toxic. I wanted it to have not a lot of steps, and I didn't want it to be expensive. And the uh, POR15, that was recommended by several of our uh, subscribers, but my God, that stuff's so expensive. It's, it's highly toxic, takes too many steps, and it costs a fortune, which is, I wanted to avoid all three of those. So this is what we're going to go with. And uh, I know it works because I watched it work. And we'll be starting on that. Mm, it's pretty cold right now. I don't want to be laying on that concrete too much. Hopefully in the next couple of days it'll warm up enough where I can get under there and get started. At long last, the sun is out in Arkansas. It's been days and days of nothing but miserable rain and cold couldn't even get out in the garage to work on the Thunderbird. Just I didn't want to lay on the concrete. Look at, look at the steam coming up over there. I don't know if you can catch that. It's hard for me to even see in the camera, but there's a lot of steam over there coming up from the ground. On that. Oh, it's nice to have the sun. It's nice. Today's temperature, the 5th of January, 2019, is supposed to reach 65 degrees. Anyway, the temperature being cold and rainy and miserable for days on end enabled me to do one thing. I accomplished one thing. Uh, we got our radio functional. We shut off the overhead fluorescent lights here. We got her going. I still want to give it an alignment. It needs one last alignment. But uh, everything's functional now. I'm a happy camper. Even our uh, volume control has now been cleaned out on the inside. I just gave it a real good bath with QD electronic cleaner. Okay, what do you say we uh, get back on that T-Bird now? You remember last time we stuck the two rear leaf spring hangers in a nice clean uh, you know gal about a gallon and a half of vinegar and white vinegar and and you can see look at there boy she's done done her thing I'll be taking them out here in a second it's an interesting thing uh, one of my commenters uh, con you know left a comment the other day that said the bad thing about using white vinegar is after you use it once it, it loses its strength and you got to get rid of it that's not right you all saw last time how many things I de-rusted in that white vinegar. It just went on and on and on until it finally got so dirty I had to get rid of it. But that is not true. You just keep using it until it no longer works. All right, let's get down in there and see what we got. I'm interested to see how much rust is still left in the center holes. Oh, almost none. Now that I like. Ooh, that's looking really good really good we're going to give that a good wire brushing and a good paint job as soon as the temperature goes up a little bit i left it in here all these days because it would have rusted had i taken it out look at that oh that's nice and clean down through there look at that anyway uh it was too cold to paint and uh it would have rusted if i just you know had taken it out and walked because you have to wash this vinegar off in the sink uh in the house or wherever you want with soap i use a paintbrush dishwashing soap and then I just give it a good scrub and a good rinse, then dry it with a paper towel or a cloth or anything best I can, and quick throw it in the oven on warm. And I have a warm setting on our stove. And I leave it in there for, you know, 20 minutes or so, and it just dries it out completely. But even so, even after all that effort to get the, the moisture off of it and get it dry as quick as I can, it still, you know, develops surface rust. So you got to run it right back out here real quick and get some primer on it, some good Rust-Oleum primer. And that takes care of the problem. Once it dries, you throw your black paint on like you've seen me do, and we're done. 
the temperature is finally nice and I can go ahead and crawl underneath the car and get working. Uh, what we're going to do is be using this large wire brush and this small wire brush and uh, we're going to just knock off the surface like I said of all the rusty area we're not going to take it down to the metal we're going to do the best we can get all the loose stuff off and uh, then we'll go ahead and spray it well I'll probably take an alcohol rag and uh, go ahead and go over the area where we you know wire brushed and then once it, it you know evaporates and everything then we'll go ahead and hit it with this Permatex rust treatment now anytime you do this of course I'm going to be working over the top of my head I don't want to be breathing all that and, and it's almost an enclosed area even though it's open under there you're kind of you know in an enclosed area down there and uh, it's good to wear a face mask uh, you don't want to be breathing in all that rust dust so let me get started here all right this is how we're going about this uh, we're just taking this old wire brush getting to the spots where I can't get to with the larger one just knock it off that rust get as much off as I can and uh, you know it's got going to be a, a thorough of just get up in there as far as we can matter of fact I've got more uh, I've got more uh, mud wasp nests up in here than I have rust <laughs> Fortunately, well, I have wire brushed from about the front of the wheel well here all the way to the rear. I did not get out into the center of the car, just in the wheel well area all the way back to where the hanger for the leaf spring will mount. And as you can see, we had much more, <laughs> a whole lot more mud wash than we ever had rust. But one thing, and it's reasons like this, you should also wear a face shield if you're going to be up underneath there. And, you know, it's not necessary, but I recommend that you use some kind of gloves. You're banging around up in there with that brush and there's sharp, rusty spots here, there, that you don't even know about it until they stab you in the hand. So, gloves, face shield, face mask. And uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of sweep all this up. And then I'm going to spray it. And I'm going to vacuum it up in there best I can. I won't be able to do the alcohol trick I wanted to do. It's just, it would take too much alcohol. So, I'll go ahead and vacuum it. Uh, up in here, you know, then I'll spray it. I'll come I'll come back when I get ready to spray it to show you what we're doing But I got to clean this mess up. I can't I can't lay in this crap anymore Alrighty She's all vacuumed out, but I'll tell you what here's something I don't like check this out I went over to the other side of the car and looked It's not like this. This has been bent up and it's a place where all kinds of mud and all kinds of stuff can catch and lay in there start rusting out. I'm surprised it hasn't done so already. So I'm going to take a pair of vice grips and we're going to bend that back down just like it is on the other side. Let me see, where did I put my vice grips? Hang on, I'll give you a chance to watch me do that. Alright, I'm not quite able to get down into there on this side of it because it's got a lot of rocks and crap down in there so let's start taking it down a bit at a time just a bit at a time and then we'll go ahead and move it over to here and bend it down and move it to here vacuum this out dig it out as much as we can until we get it all down let me see come on man of course my vice grips don't want to cooperate now there we go okay one more we'll come over here got to get down as deep as we can And keep on moving across. So I'm going to keep going back and forth. It's like on the other side, it's actually straight down, just like it is right here. All right, she looks a whole lot better. What I did was I took uh, my sledgehammer, used it as a, you know, body maul, then just or body dolly rather, then just hammered it from the other side so I got it down straight. She looks pretty good. She looks just about like the one on the other side now. Now I'll have to wire brush it. All right, we're ready to do it to it. Let me read some of the instructions on the back here. It says, you know, you sand it with a coarse sandpaper or your wire brush. Get as much of the dirt and oil off as you can, which is what I've done. Now keep in mind, I have not done the center part of the car underneath. Just this area along here, okay, underneath. Probably from about right there all the way to the rear. I'll do the same over there. And then later on, we'll get to the center here, 
I just, I'm just trying to get it cleaned up for the uh, for the leaf springs when I get ready to put the leaf springs in because once all that crap is up there it's going to be very hard to get up in there and get that rust off but over in this area here it'll still be open enough for me to do all right it says uh, what else does it say uh, you got to apply uh, eight to ten inches away two to three thin coats allowing no more than two minutes drying time between the coats final application should dry to a black finish, allow 24 hours to dry before top coating. Well, I'm not sure what they mean by top coating. I guess they were talking about paint, but I think I can go ahead and use undercoating over the top of this stuff. You know, a thin coat. And if, any, any, if, you, if you use a thin coat of undercoating and not gook it up till it's, you know, a foot and a half thick. If you, if you just use a thin coat of undercoating uh, under, over the top of this sort of thing, if rust begins to develop, you'll probably see it. And you'll be able to knock it out, spray it again. And uh, hopefully I won't have to spray again. This stuff is supposed to, it says right there, it says, destroys rust on contact. Well, let's get under there and do some spraying, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, one more thing. It says to use gloves so it doesn't stain your hands. But, you know, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't say anything here about shaking it up. I'm going to go ahead and shake it anyway. What the heck? By the way, this rechargeable light has really been a savior here. This is fantastic. You charge it up, it takes about five hours, I guess, but you get four hours of light out of it. Well, that's pretty cool, and it really does light things up. I am really happy my son got me that. He bought several things. Uh, you'll be hearing about those at a later date. He bought them for the uh, Thunderbird. And uh, Brendan, he said, you know, I told, him what, I told him what my son bought us, and he said, boy, the old T-Bird made out good on Christmas. <laughs> All right, here goes. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it better. Let me get up and do as far as I can. I may have to wind up getting more than one can of this. You know, I watched old uh, Pete on... Do it yourself. Auto school, do this. He really showered down on it, you know, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not going to mess around. So far, so good. Let me get over here. Boy, it doesn't smell too good. I'll tell you what, let's give this, uh, I'm all done spraying. Let's give this thing a little, a little really big test. Here's our rusty old tailpipe. Let's go ahead and spray that thing too and see what happens. By the way, one more precaution. Uh, this stuff here is not to be used on the outside of the car. It's not to be used here. It's to be used up underneath the car, places like that, maybe on the inside of the car, under the, you know, on the floorboards where you might have some rust something of that nature if you got a now if you have a rusty hole here like i'm probably going to have uh, and you have to you know take this out or grind it out and you, you find out that there's rust up inside here you can spray it up inside there and down and around the best you can but just don't put it on the outside of the car and then try to paint over it unless you just don't care i mean it's, it's your car no biggie well that's it guys we're all done i used almost the entire can i really wanted to shower down on that back under there because uh, I don't want to have to go back under there and do it again before I, you know, we stick the leaf springs in, which will be coming in in and, the and not-too-distant future. Uh, we're working on that as well. Right now, let's, uh, let's go back to the last video on the computer and look at some of the suggestions that everybody gave me on, you know, fixing the holes in the trunk and how to do it. Let me see if I can get this camera to focus. God, it's just rough on white. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, read those comments, and I'll maybe comment uh, as we go down, and let's see what we can come up. Let's see if we can come up with a winner. We have Wayback Tech here. He says reinforced body filler would fill the holes. He said he's done it before; it works well. And uh, JB Weld, he said might also work if you put tape on the other side of the trunk. <laughs> no kidding, you know. <laughs> I don't want it to trip out all over my floor. That's for sure. All right, Ron C. Let me see. He says, 
Use rubber grommets. This uh, assumes all rust is gone. Put a strong magnet and a piece of cardboard under the underside of the card and fill the holes with JB Weld. A magnet and cardboard, okay. And then he says use a rubber plumbing seat washer on both sides of the hole and use a brass screw to hold it all in place. Well, I'll tell you what, Ron. I think you better change your brand of a liquor. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, let me see what we got here we just keep on going here's a fellow right here uh, Pablo Picasso he says he he's from the old country and he does have a 65 T-bird in his garage how about that there's one of the folks that uh, has been paying attention to what we're doing here I assume and uh, here's a fellow James B he says I've been looking at a 64 to 66 T-bird for two months now he wants to kind of lean toward the 66, though. He likes the way the taillights blink. I don't blame him. I'm the same way. <laughs> he said he's going to be 42 years old next month. And he's always liked those older cars. Well, good for him. Oh, uh, let me see. Everybody's saying Happy New Year and all that. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Here's a fella that says, uh, use body panel adhesive. Well, that's a good idea. It would take a whole lot. Uh, he said, yeah, is adhesive strong and it glues on panels and cars with it. They sure do. They, they put floorboards down with that stuff now. I've been checking around with that body panel adhesive. That stuff, that stuff is really, really strong, and a lot of your uh, body uh, shops are using it. Uh, here's one from Old 64 Goat. He says, uh, put Bondo glass to fill the holes in the trunk. Uh, you know, every time I hear the word uh, Bondo, I, I go back to my young days of, I remember, it, it's Black Magic. It was called Black Magic. It was the Bondo we all used when I was a kid. It was it was cheap, it was on the market, and it was junk. <laughs> I keep Every time I hear Bondo, I think of that. Uh, here's one here from uh, KF6 MYV. Tape the bottom of the hole, fill it with epoxy. And sand it flat, okay. And... Uh, let me see, here's a guy who wants me to send some of our weather up there, old Spirit Wolf 522, <laughs> up there in Ohio. I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> uh, let me see, I think there was one or two more. Rebel 9668, and uh, he said he got to drive uh, to Tennessee all the way in the heavy rain that we had here recently. Oh, poor guy. That was pretty bad stuff there. Let me see uh, what else we got here. I'm sure we've got one or more uh, comments here on what to do about that. I may, I hope I didn't pass any by. Here's Vincent Del Venero. Uh, he wants me, he says he, he likes the car and he can't wait to see the jukebox rebuilt. It's already been rebuilt, my friend. 87 videos. <laughs> right now it's just got a little, ma uh, little, uh, uh, a little defect I got to correct and do a little troubleshooting on malfunction as they call it but we'll have it right but it's all been rebuilt completely from top to bottom uh let me see fiberglass yeah rock oobster he wants the fiberglass not bondo putty i don't know man i i messed with that fiberglass in the past i do not like messing with fiberglass it is a mess the cloth you know you got to cut the cloth the stuff sticks to your hands your fingers sticks to your gloves it sticks to everything it's just too much of a hassle you know i i've used it uh, lots of times, but I kind of get away from it nowadays. Uh, let me see. Tiny Ando's. Okay, Mark Duncan Broad. He says uh, you need some uh, water and gas vapor resistant, something that's water and gas vapor resistant that is easy to apply. JB Weld makes epoxy uh, putty product called Tank Weld. I know, I know exactly what it is. Uh, he says it's tough as rat's teeth. It can be sanded and painted. Works for me. Marine Tex makes a similar. Equally good product. Yeah, all right. J.B. Weld, Johnny Draco says, J.B. Weld on the holes. William Lane says, seam sealer. All right. I guess that's about it. Let me see. Uh, I'm a junk collector says, uh, we got to pet some sardines and Vienna sausage. But I'm glad I read that twice. I, I thought he wanted me to pack those holes with sardines and Vienna sausage. <laughs> and the winner is... I'm going to use JB Weld Steel Reinforced Epoxy. I think that's going to work. I'll just grind away with my motor tool on each side, you know, make a round, a bare spot, tape it underneath like everybody pretty much knew about. Then we'll fill it in with the uh, 
the uh, steel bond here, the steel reinforced epoxy, and we'll let it dry, and then we'll see what happens. I think that's going to work pretty good. I think there's enough in this one tube to do it all. It's a two-part concoction. You squeeze them both and mix them together real good. And I think it's, I'm not sure how long it takes to dry. Quite a while, I think. I don't think, let me see. Set time, four to six hours. Cures in 15 hours. Cures to a dark gray, just like your standard JB Weld. Then we'll go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to try to smooth it down enough where I don't have to sand it. I mean, after all, this is all going to be covered up eventually with a, sound deadening material and a carpet i do want to do all that but i need to get my buns moving on this right here but it's just been too cold to come out here all right uh i think what we're going to do now is just uh, hold off until tomorrow and the rest of the week's going to be warm we'll hold off till tomorrow i'm not going to spray the you know wire brush and spray this other side if this side doesn't look good when i you know tomorrow so we'll find out if this treatment's going to work. If it looks real black and it looks real good, then yeah, we'll move over here and hit the other side. All right, the primer's been on. Let's go ahead and finish this up with some black paint. I think when we get done, it's going to look real good. There's not a lick of rust on those things anywhere. I am just so happy about that. Well, they turned out real good. I mean, that old vinegar made the job so much easier. I mean, all I had to do was put a coat, you know, a couple of coats of primer and two, three coats of uh, black gloss paint on it, and I was done. <laughs> That's all there was to it. So we'll go ahead and get them in a the box. I'll probably let them sit here for another day, really harden up good. Then we'll stick them in a box, or I don't know, maybe I'll bolt them back on the car. That's probably what I should do, just bolt these back on, we'll get, it, we'll get them ready to go. Well, it's the next day, and all of our rust treatment is dry. And I'm very happy to report that the only place where there was rust is where you see these specks. All the rest of this stuff was red oxide primer where the uh, undercoating had come off. So all we have to do now is start uh, spraying it with a, you know, an automotive primer. I have lots of extra left over here in this can that I didn't like before because it has kind of a rough texture but it'll work underneath the car and I also have this can here that's a primer and paint together so we'll go ahead and shoot the you know what out of it we're just going to go ahead and get it all covered let it dry for a day or so in the meantime I'll work on up in this area here uh, today finish this up and on the other side where the uh, where the other hanger uh, attaches and then we'll be ready to shoot some undercoating over the top of it. Now I'm not going to spray everything with primer. Just the areas where the uh, undercoating is missing and the uh, rust treatment was sprayed. All the rest up here where the, you know, the undercoating is, there's no need for that. Be a big waste of money. I am a dirty mess once again, but I am happy to report that the front section of the car where the where the front hanger bolts which is over here and all of this up through here has all been wire brushed and i'm happy to report that most of it after i got the dirt off most of it is that red oxide primer again almost no rust at all except on the bottom of the uh, the floor pan and the back seat this is where the the, the uh, back part of the back seat and the floorboard down here, kind of give you an idea. This is the front of the car down here. And uh, we're gonna do the rest of it later. But for right now, I think we're in pretty darn good shape. All of this is uh, uh, undercoating. All of this undercoating has just been worn off over the years, don't ask me why. And uh, all of this is all undercoated up here, so that's in good shape. I'll be running into the same thing on the other side of the car over there. Not too bad. Most of it is just dirt. Alright, that looks real good up in there now that I've got it all primed. I only primed the areas where the metal was had been treated with the rust. The rest of the areas we just left alone. It's just undercoating. Right now I'm gonna it's all dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take my undercoating now and just give it a light coat. Well, that's it for the undercoating. I went ahead and undercoated everything. I gave it a, I gave it actually two light coats just to make sure, okay? But I can't see any place that's rusted now. 
Everything else has, you know, the old undercoating on it. We should be good to go. And we'll just let that dry overnight. Now I just sprayed this whole area with the uh, rust treatment and you can see there's almost no rust there at all. It's almost all just exposed red oxide primer. We're going to have to let that dry now for 24 hours. Well, I'm going to give it a couple more coats just to be on the safe side. Well, that's about it for treating, you know, for treatment, you know, the uh, the de-rusting, the cleaning, the de-rusting, and then the priming and the undercoating. Uh, that, as far as I'm concerned, we'll just finish this up tomorrow. It's supposed to be another warm day today. The temperature's supposed to get up 67. It feels it, too. Oh, it's great. And uh, so everything you've seen me do here, we're going to wind up doing to the other side of the car. Once we get them both done, then when the leaf springs come in, I won't have to wrestle around the leaf springs trying to get it all done. So now you know how I do it, okay? Well, we're about to wrap this video up. I didn't mean for it to be so long, but, you know, I have to take advantage of the warm days. And the days that it's warm is when I got to get my buns out here and do, this, do the work and uh, do the filming. But I have one more thing I need to do. This is our brake line. By the way, our brake lines are in outstanding condition. Look at that. Just shiny and new. I don't think I'm going to mess with those brake lines. I think they look they look just great all the way to the front of the car. Look at that. There is a possibility they've been changed. I don't know. I mean, you know, you'd think a car this old would have rusty lines. Even the gas line that it's running next to is uh, really nice and shiny and everything. So there's a good good possibility they've been changed in the not too distant past. So what we're going to do, though, is this brake line here will come through this hole here and then hook to the rubber line that goes down to the axle. This is where they connect and join together. But right now it's just kind of dangling free there. So what I need to do is I don't want to be spraying that hole right there full of undercoating. So I'm going to take some of this tape right here, this little old blue tape. I'm going to rip off a piece. I'm going to put it across that hole right there and cover that up. You know, I guess I'll just have to remember to take it off later, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you learned something from this, especially you folks with the uh, Thunderbirds. We got a couple of comments from a few folks that uh, they said they have since uh, they either have a Thunderbird and never said anything to us until now, or they said they just bought a Thunderbird, uh, 64, 65, or 66, and that they're really getting a lot out of these videos, and that's what they're all about. You know, I'm no genius. You know, I've worked on cars many, many years, and I do things pretty much my way, but I do like to pick up new modern ways from time to time. But when you're working on the old cars, trust me, the old ways of doing it are, are the best, you know. <laughs> At least they are to me on how to do things and how not to do things. It was the way I learned. How long has it been since we've tuned in uh, WSM Nashville 650 on a radio that I've repaired and had it on a video? It's been a long time. I used to love tuning in WSM at night, and I always used that as my test station to make sure my radios were functional because it's, it was one of those faraway stations. It took quite a bit to pull it in. Let's see what we've got here. Mix a little car repair in with country music. I mean, that, that's the best life, huh? <laughs> Until next time, this is John.